Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Once Upon a Snowman press conference. Uh, I'm Amy Astley, Vice President of Communications and Publicity for Walt Disney Animation Studios, and it is a pleasure to welcome you all here today. Now, we cannot wait to see all of you at an in-person press conference. I never knew I would miss hotel catering this much, but I cannot tell you how thankful we are that you're joining us here virtually today. Um, all of you should have received your link to the Once Upon a Snowman screener. Uh, in this all new Walt Disney Animation Studios animated short, the previously untold origins of Olaf, the innocent and insightful summer loving snowman who melted hearts in the Academy Award winning 2013 Disney animated feature Frozen and its acclaimed 2019 sequel are revealed. The film follows Olaf's first steps as he comes to life and searches for his identity in the snowy mountains outside Arendelle. So here today with us are four of the key filmmakers for Once Upon a Snowman, folks that I consider myself lucky to call coworkers and colleagues. Uh, Becky Brzee. Becky Brzee began her Disney animation career. Hi, Becky. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she began her Disney animation career as an animator in, on the film Dinosaur. And in fact, I think your first shot was animating toes and tails of a dinosaur, right? That's correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. And in her career, she's worked on several Disney animation films, including Bolt, Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, and Moana. Uh, within the world of Frozen, Becky was the supervising animator of the character Anna in the first film and went on to be head of animation on the short Frozen Fever and on last year's Frozen 2. Last summer, she jumped immediately from heading up the animation on Frozen 2 to doing the same role on Once Upon a Snowman. Please welcome Head of Animation, Becky. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Amy. Next up, we have Peter Del Vecco. Peter is our Academy Award, Golden Globe, and PGA Award-winning producer of Frozen. Hi, Peter. Hi. Peggy, you can keep your camera on if you want. We're having everybody join together. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Peter joined Disney Animation in 1995. He's worked on films including Hercules, Treasure Planet, and Chicken Little. He was the producer of The Princess and the Frog and Winnie the Pooh. And in addition to the film Frozen, of course, which he produced, uh, Peter has produced the number one animated film of all time, Frozen 2, which uh, is uh, first uh, topping only Frozen 1 as the top two animated films of all time. Uh, he is now senior Frozen vice president. Two, two, and Frozen two is number one, so. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, he is now senior vice president of production for Disney Animation and with Osnat Sure is currently producing Raya and the Last Dragon, our next theatrical feature. Please welcome Peter. Uh, Dan Abraham, director, is a veteran story man, uh, director and animator who began his association. There he is, hi Dan with Walt Disney mm -hmm. Studios in 2005 uh, when he started as an intern, uh, which eventually led to full-time roles both at Disney Animation and Disney Toon Studios. Uh, he was head of story on 2013's theatrical film, Planes. And I think your directorial, directorial debut is a short film that I always have trouble pronouncing, Vitaminimulch. Vitaminimulch, Air All Spectacular, right. that's right. I got it. Vitaminimulch, Air Spectacular. Um, and Dan was a leading story artist on Frozen 2 and is currently working on a certain film he can't talk about that isn't officially announced, but maybe Lin-Manuel Miranda talked about it a little bit on Good Morning America a few months ago. So please welcome Dan Abraham. Uh, and our hey, last man. but not least, uh, our director, Trent Corey. So Trent Corey started, hi Trent, hi, uh, as a Disney, uh, at Disney Animation in 2012 and uh, as an animation trainee in the talent development program. His credits in, as an animator include Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, multiple shorts. And in addition to his feature assignment on Frozen 2, where he oversaw the animation of Olaf, uh, Bruni, the fire spirit, Salamander, among other characters, he made his directing debut on the short circuit film, Drop, which of course you can also see on Disney+. Plus. He's currently on at work on an uh, as yet unannounced new project for Disney Plus. Uh, please welcome Trent Corey. Thank you guys all for being here today. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. So we're going to be opening up uh, the the Q and A for questions, of course, from all of you reporters very soon. But just wanted to start with a few opening questions. Um, at Disney Animation, Trent, we have the Short Circuit program. We have the Theatrical Shorts program. But the inception of this short happened in a really kind of unique, totally different way. Can you talk about the inception of this short uh, when you shared it with Jen and, and when you really got the green light to make it? 
Yeah, of course. Thanks, Amy. And thanks for the intro. And it's good to have the Olaf team back together. Look at this group. Uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this idea dates back, uh, like Amy mentioned, I started in the training program at Disney in 2012. And actually my very first film at Disney was the first Frozen where I get to meet Becky and Peter and, and later I met Dan. Uh, but this idea came from, I started as a crowd animator uh, during the first Frozen and my very first character in anime was Olaf. And I was very lucky to get to animate Olaf for the rest of the show. And I very clearly remember seeing Chad Sellers animate a shot during Let It Go while I was a trainee and uh, Elsa makes Olaf and it's beautiful. And then she just walks away. She creates life and, and, she, and she walks away. And I was like, there's gotta be a story there. I love Pinocchio, I love Bambi. And I'm like, I wanna see what Olaf's first steps are like. And we don't see him for another 20 minutes in the film. So I actually found sketches last week when I was moving of original ideas from 2013, uh, little beat boards and writing and ideas of Olaf taking his first steps and learning about who he is. And, you know, cut to last year, uh, Jennifer Lee, our fearless leader, uh, stood on stage and said, we're gonna be partnering with Disney Plus. And I thought right then that this is the perfect opportunity to have this short come out, uh, you know, eight years later. And uh, that's when I got to work with all these fine folks, Peter, Becky, and Dan. That's wonderful. Um, Dan, you had just finished doing your story work on Frozen 2, which you did one of my favorite sequences in the movie, Storyboarding Lost in the Woods. That sequence is bananas and legendary, <laughs> and I love working that. Um, what was the experience for you um, how did you come to partner with Trent as his fellow director on this project? Uh, thank you, Amy, for the compliment. Um, I had a ball working on that song. And, um, and then I also got the opportunity in Frozen 2 to work on the Olaf song. So I got to storyboard that as well. And uh, working with Jen, Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck and Peter. And uh, they, I guess they liked what I had done with the Olaf song. And they're like, oh, this guy kind of has a handle on who Olaf is. And so Jennifer asked if I would partner with Trent and direct this great idea that he had all these years ago. And so the two of us just kind of went arm in arm from there. It was, uh, we had a ball. So wonderful. Uh, Peter, this short might be a first for us anyway, in that it's a production that was right on the tail end of Frozen 2. Um, you know, we can see in Into the Unknown making Frozen 2. Frozen 2 was a real experience in terms of making it. Uh, what was the experience for you of going straight from one to the other? Well, I'm sure Trent and Becky and Dan can attest when you make these movies, it, you get to know these characters really well, it becomes a family. And as hard as the movies are to finish, it's also hard to step away. So I think the fact that, that Trent and Dan had this uh, story ready to go, um, we could build on that enthusiasm of having finished the first movie and bring all that skill um, and, and the momentum that we had as you finish a movie, bring that right into the short. And, and I think it was a, it was a nice uh, way almost to celebrate, uh, to continue to celebrate the, the finish of the movie. Uh, Becky, you have been head of at animation now, as I said, when I was introducing you on three Frozen projects. Two part question for you. What is it about the frozen world that really speaks to you as an artist and animator? And what did you enjoy about making this particular short? Well, you know, when I started on the first frozen, um, I was really in it for the fairy tale of it. I've, I've always loved fairy tales, Disney art and it all, um, it spoke to me. Um, and as well as the, as you know, Anna was a princess and I grew up wanted to be a princess, but after, um, after a while, it started to become a sister story. And then it spoke to me in a very different way because I have sisters and more so I have daughters and they're my little Anna and Elsa. So it kind of, I was more invested now, even more so than before. So um, that's what drew me to the, to the um, project. And, and um, what's, what's wonderful about Olaf is he's a reflection of the love between these two sisters. So it's, it really, um, I don't know, he's just such a, he's just such a wonderful character. Um, and the second part was what? Well, what did you enjoy about Once Upon a Snowman? Oh yeah, well, like Peter said, um, it's, it really is not often we get to revisit characters. And so, you know, when Frozen 2 came up, it was just, we were like, yeah, 
we get to visit these characters again and then to continue on with this story that's very special and ties everything together um, from those first moments of Olaf. It was, it, it's a really unique way to revisit um, the scenes and think about the people who animated the scenes on the movie and then how it all ties in. Um, one of my favorite parts um, on this was I got to animate the moment, the last scene where Olaf walks over the hill approaching um, Anna and Kristoff and in storyboards that gave me goosebumps, you guys. So kudos to you, <laughs> like it was amazing. But like when you're animating it and you realize this is the moment to right before he walks into Kristoff and Anna's life and changes them forever and changes all of us forever, really, because, you know, now we have this character in our lives. So I think that's, it, it was very special to me. And um, I'm so, I'm proud of that. That's awesome. Well, I had this question as well, but I, I think I'd rather ask it from one of our reporters. Uh, and forgive me, I don't have everyone's names. I have your, your Zoom names. So Film Steve 3 <laughs> asks, what makes Olaf so adorable and beloved? And that was my question too, is we keep going back to Olaf as a character with which, whether it's this wonderful short or the at home with Olaf's we made last spring when we were first working from home, what is it about this character? For anyone on I, the panel. I, I would say that, you know, Olaf has this overwhelming like optimism and sincerity about him. And that just never gets old. It's, it's something that we all sort of aspire to and sometimes fall short, but Olaf is always there like charging, charging ahead with just this eternal optimism and sweetness that I think is a part of all of us, but maybe we wish was we had more of, and it, it's sort of aspiring. Yeah. Well, you... I'll just go on there really quickly, Amy, that, uh, that I, you know, I grew up on Disney movies in the 90s. I loved Aladdin, by far my favorite movie. And the genie was my favorite character. And I think, you know, I, what I loved about the genie was that he could be hilarious and change shapes, but he could also be sincere. And from my animator's point of view, Olaf's just, just everyone's favorite character to animate because he, he can be very emotional. Uh, like Becky mentioned, he's, he's connected to the sisters, but he's also fun to just break apart. Yes, yeah, so it really <laughs> falls apart sometimes, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think we can all relate to his sort of innocence as a child. You know, that, that's slightly naive look at the world, but in doing so, I agree, Trent, he can really hit on some profound emotional things. He can zero in on things that maybe as adults we miss. Yeah, he can be so existential too, like when he's realizing he's snow, but he's walking on snow and once upon a snowman, I love that. <laughs> and, and you really can't talk about Olaf with, without talking about Josh Gad, of course. Uh, Laura asked the question, how much of the story was written versus how much did Josh improvise? Hey, Laura. Um, that's a great question. You know what, uh, Dan and I and Jennifer, we all kind of put our heads together for the script. And Josh, he is just as funny in the movie and on his Instagram and social media as he is in person. He is hilarious. In fact, Dan and I were in the recording booth with him, not behind glass. And I think the hardest part about that was just not trying not to laugh so we didn't mess up the take. I, I, was, I was covering my mouth most of the time, just spitting uh, while Josh was uh, just having a blast. But he is so generous with his time. He came in right after Frozen 2 uh, to record this with us. He gives you so much as an actor and a comedian. Uh, I, I just love, love working with him. Is there, any, is there any line he improv in particular that people should sort of listen for or, or any particular moment that he gave you while directing him? I, I know the line in the script was when he's looking at himself in the mirror, he's like, I kind of look like a Trevor. And, and Josh was the one that turned it into the, I kind of look like a Fernando or a Trevor, like he was sort of searching a little bit more and, and I'm gonna leave it to Josh to come up with the most random funny name that uh, would not really fit Olaf. I don't know if he's a Fernando or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, of course, when you get Olaf and Josh Gad together, uh, all the little improvisations of laughing, giggling, screaming, uh, just he makes the script come to life. He makes the short come to life. His uh, giggles and... make me giggle. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And if you guys wouldn't mind sharing, I, I was really uh, personally touched about uh, him coming to the, the rap party, if you guys could want to share that with the, with the group here. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell a quick story. I'd love to hear everyone else too. Josh came in excited. He brought his family and his, his little kids, which was adorable. And uh, this cracked me up. I still think about it all the time. 
his little daughter came up to me. I'm not sure how old she is, but she came up to me and she, she kind of shakes my hand and she says, I didn't like the short. I loved the short. And I was like, gosh, she is Josh Gad's daughter. Like, <laughs> the timing was perfect that even I fell for like a three-year-old's joke. Uh, <laughs> and in your mind, you're thinking, what? Why do we work so hard? Don't tell your dad. You know, I also liked how genuinely appreciative he was of all the work on the films, on the short. Um, you know, he, he often talks about the fact he gets to sort of be in front of the public a lot, and but he he very much recognizes all the work that is put into these films, the animation, everything, and and it, it's a true partnership. You know, Peter, that's a it's a really good point that Josh, he comes and talks to the animation crew throughout the production of Frozen, Frozen Two, and Once Upon a Snowman. The animators love him. He he will just talk endlessly to the point where we're like, "Okay, Josh, we got to work. Uh, maybe maybe it's time to go." Yeah, he's very giving of his time. Yeah. Well, and Jeannie was his favorite character too. And I think we have a lot of voice cast actors and actresses we work with who have such a deep appreciation for what all of you bring to the films. But when Josh talks about it, what you each contribute and how this collaboration works, I think it's it's really special. Um, we have a question and really it applies to most of you because most of you did work on the first Frozen. What did it feel like, particularly on the heels of Frozen 2, to step back into the world of Frozen 1? And that comes from uh, Mama's Geeky. Thank you for the question. It was easy. <laughs> it was easy to want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we all became, I mean, our group of supervisors that go right on to Frozen are into um, Once Upon a Snowman. We know each other so well. And um, it's like you said, Amy, it's kind of like a family. And so it was this extra little bit of time we had to spend with each other and with the characters. So I, I was really excited about it. I, I agree with Becky. You get to the end of these productions and there are a lot of work as you saw in the, in the Making a Frozen uh, documentary. And, but you get to the end and you're like, oh no, I actually don't want it to be over. I want to keep it going. So we kept it going. And then I think <laughs> towards the end of our short, we're like, anyone, any other ideas? Let's keep it, let's keep this moving. I, I you know what's fun too. Go ahead, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to say off of what Becky was saying that like Becky and I went to college together so we've been friends for five years now. No, we've been friends for a long time. So to be able to work together, I mean, and, and, and it's, it's amazing. It's very, it's very, very cool. Um, okay, this question we have to ask, and I always appreciate when people um, ask it. Amy uh, Folker asked, what are some of the fun Easter eggs we should be looking for in Once Upon a Snowman? Oh, well, there's, there's a lot of little fun tidbits uh, throughout the short because we're showing it from a different perspective, obviously. Uh, one of the ones I love is uh, Oaken selling Anna's coronation dress. I want to buy Anna's coronation dress. It's for sale. I don't know if you can, <laughs> it's pricey, Becky, it's pricey. Uh, I just, I love the idea that, you know, in the movie you see Anna walk out in her new, um, you know, winter clothing to, to go up the North Mountain. And we get to show what happened to that dress and that Oaken made a small profit. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, there's other little uh, uh, Easter eggs within the, um, the cards that he looks at, uh, Olaf, Olaf looks at in the, in the stereoscope. There's a few different uh, shots in there that people might be keen on from other films and that. Well, you can get one of those films if you want. What, what might people see in those postcards? You might see a Moana film, uh, <laughs> a shot in there. You might see a little Moana. A little Motunui action there. That's right. Then I think I think there might be a Tangled uh, image. Is there? Yeah, I, think, I so. think so. Okay, I'll have to look for that one the next time. I mean, I think that is one of my favorite elements of the short is I, we've all been asking ourselves, how on earth did the snowman fall in love with summer? How did you guys arrive at that as an idea within this short? Um, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> Well, we, when, when really diving into what this short was going to be and how it was going to weave in and out of the first film, uh, we watched the first film, especially this, the sequence, you know, from when Elsa creates him during Let It Go to when Anna and Kristoff and Sven meet him in, in the forest. We watched that over and over and over and over and over again. And so like what little things can we weave in there that makes sense or that would answer questions or whatever? 
And you know, one of them I always had was like, well, he is obsessed with summer yet he doesn't know he would melt. How does that work? How does he know what summer is? Like he was just created and stuff. So uh, there was a very logical explanation for that. And we, we see it in this little short. It, it, it just, it kind of wrote itself. Like it made sense that it would be in there. And all these, all these little ideas. And, and I love that Dan, you know, Dan was the one coming up with the stereoscope. I thought it was genius. And Oaken being the one to teach him. And, uh, you know, I, I'll speak for all of us here and say we're all fans of the Frozen franchise. So it's fun for us to go find those little areas throughout the short to say, oh, we could, you know, show Anna here or, oh, we could have Kristoff singing uh, Reindeer Better Than People. Um, are there more untold Frozen stories in the works? And I'll, I'll throw that question to Peter. Uh, you, you know, I think we're just happy that this short uh, gets to have its debut on Disney Plus. You know, we get asked that question a lot. I mean, clearly there's, there's um, you know, there's a real passion for the stories and for these sisters, for the whole, the whole family. Um, but right now um, uh, we're focused on other things. I'm focused on Raya. Um, Jen is focused on running the studio, uh, uh, but we still love these characters. Um, yeah, that's the first time you've had that question, I think, right? We've never been asked about Frozen 3. <laughs> uh, no, never. never. <laughs> I think that was the number one question on the press tour. Um, for, for Frozen 2, right. Because <laughs> it wasn't even out in theaters yes. being asked about Frozen, Frozen 3, no. which I love. <laughs> so we so appreciate the, the enthusiasm for it. Um, what, what was Josh Gad's response when he was invited back to come, to come back as Olaf for this? Well, like Peter mentioned, he is, he is so gracious. He understands the process, you know, better than any of us. He, he understands the collaboration and he's, he seems just always thrilled to play the character and to find new things to bring to the character. And I think he found some little unique uh, things to bring to the short. That's wonderful. Um, Shannon McGrew asks a question. Can you talk about designing Olaf, which of course happened years ago, um, and, but what were, what were those challenges you faced, perhaps in that design specific to the short? Obviously you were playing with what his nose might end up being uh, quite a bit on the short, if you wanna talk about that. <laughs> Maybe I'll let Dan elaborate a little <laughs> bit, but you know, we're building off a lot of work from a lot of many talented artists throughout the studio that have worked with the Frozen franchise for eight plus years. Uh, you know, Hiram Osman was the original Olaf supervisor on Frozen 1. Him and the team, you know, discovered things like if we don't bend Olaf's arms, he'll move a little more like a toddler so he doesn't have elbows. Uh, so really, there's a lot to build off of design-wise. And, you know, for the nose, in my original pitch, uh, it was actually a fish nose that he has for most of the short. And, uh, and then I pitched it to Dan, and he's like, huh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Honestly, like the fish to have, like you've seen the short, like the fish is now on there for a few seconds and it's sort of just a funny gag. But when he's running around with a fish on his face for several minutes, <laughs> it, it, it's too much. Like it just does it, it, it and he, Olaf is being chased by wolves. And to me, I'm like, if he was being chased by cats and he had a fish on his nose, that like the, that story math adds up better for me. But since it was wolves, I'm like, well, what if we make it a, a sausage? What if we make it, you know, meat? Cause wolves and meat kind of, that, that math adds up better, so. Chant, are you still upset about that? Yeah, I, I bring it up every chance I can. But to Chan's <laughs> point, it was really hard to figure out where to look when that fish was flopping around. Yeah. Uh, Alex from laughingplace.com uh, asks, how challenging was it to insert new animated moments into scenes we recognize from the first Frozen? Was that difficult technically, visually? Well, you know, uh, some of that stuff had to be reanimated. Uh, and I'll let maybe Becky talk to this because one of my favorite moments is Olaf yeah. walking to Oaken's cabin and seeing Anna walk out. And, uh, you know, Becky actually animated that moment from the first movie of Anna going to Kristoff's barn. Uh, so it was fun to show that stuff from a new angle. Yeah, it was kind of neat. The whole project was neat in that, um, like, we know who animated the first moments. And then seeing those moments from a totally different angle, it's just so interesting because I have it in my head. Who animated the shot? Like, the movements they did, the acting. And, um, and you have kind of insight to what's happening next and before and all that. So it's just really fun to see it all connect. Um, and, you know, Anna and Olaf narrowly miss each other 
I mean, except that Olaf gets smashed by the door. So she didn't miss him. She got him. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's just neat to see these moments play out in a different way. It's a, this is a slightly related question from Carla, uh, AKA the curvy critic, but how difficult was it to decide how and when to marry those certain scenes and pick those scenes? I mean, it sounds to me like you watched the first film and, and there were some things that happened naturally, but how difficult was it to sort of curate that? Well, we, you know, we, we didn't want to force it in, in any way. So the story of what Olaf was trying to accomplish and discover who he was and all that sort of led us to these different locations. And then we're like, oh my, like, you know what's happening right here at Oaken's right now? Like, so it, it, it sort of guided us when we knew what the story we wanted to tell, the story kind of took us to these places and the, the sort of behind the scenes, putting the camera in a different place, like it, it just mostly worked naturally, really. Yeah. And thank you all for your questions, by the way. They're so good, it's hard to choose. And we only have a couple of minutes left in the press conference, but I have to pick one from Norway. Uh, Morton from Norway. Uh, asks the frozen movies were heavily influenced of course by Norwegian nature, culture and traditions. Can you say something about the inspiration for this short film? And Peter, I know you've been seeped in this for a long time. If you wanna talk about those original influences you see once again. Yeah, there, there's no question, um, you know, even first movie and the second movie, we visited Norway, Finland, um, uh, other countries and, and you know, drew a lot of inspiration from that. So, the, you know, I think a lot from the short and I'll let Dan and Trent speak to it pulls off that same inspiration uh, from, from the movie, then we reuse a lot of the, uh, uh, of the locations uh, from the original movie. Although, like Becky said, from a different point of view. Yeah, I, I, I love the inspiration from the original movie. I've been to Norway, I've been to, to Oslo and Trondheim and uh, it's a beautiful country. And I went in the winter time, so I get to walk through snow. Now I am Canadian, so I know what that feels like, but <laughs> I always love watching Olaf uh, walk through the snow because his little feet push the snow so well and uh, it's fun you know Frozen 2 is mostly uh, in the fall so it was fun to uh, fun to see snow again in the frozen world. I did forget that Becky we sent you to Wyoming just to walk through snow and some other animators on the first movie just to get that experience and understand um, uh, you know what it's like to animate characters walking through snow. That's right and it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't have a whole lot of it in the first frozen. <laughs> but yeah, they the costume department costume department made us a huge skirt with a you know underskirt and everything to try to show us how you know it might be for Anna to walk through the snow and um it's very hard to walk through snow. <laughs> but yeah, we learned a lot on that trip actually and um even the effects animators that were with us, they they were filming how us snowball might work and it kind of informed um, how they were going to figure out um, the snow for the movie so and it came a matter of how came about. So. And um, <clears throat> well it's just two more questions quick ones. Uh, Jim Hill, hi Jim, uh, asks if you, you only have so much screen time of course when it comes to a short were there any other off-screen moments for Olaf that didn't quite make it in this final version? No, I mean, there were variations on moments. Uh, I think we got a lot in that we wanted to. I was really excited about, um, you know, Olaf inadvertently causing the wolf chase that we see in the movie. Uh, but in an early version, actually, instead of Elsa's cape coming off, it was her glove and it kind of slapped Olaf to life. Uh, I like the cape better, but uh, we go through versions of these scenarios like that. Yeah, we did, we did really early on too. We toyed with the idea of having a song and, and it, the story just didn't sort of guide us to where a song would go. And instead of force it, um, we're songless. Yeah. And I do love as you hear all of the background music that's-, that's Oh um, yeah. Yeah, and that, that to me, like that's enough for, to fall in love with everything, so. Um, we will end with the manuals question. Um, with the joy uh, that all of you have uh, working with Olaf, would you like to work on any future projects? with the character, perhaps future shorts, or maybe even a series. Uh, Amy, if I could work with Olaf for the rest of my life, I'd be <laughs> quite okay with that. He is so fun. Uh, and you know, it's, it's about working with the team uh, behind him too. That's all of, uh, all of you on camera here. So for me, it's the character, but the team behind Frozen is just fantastic. <laughs>
That's wonderful. Um, thank you everyone um, from Walt Disney Animation Studios, from Walt Disney Studios and Disney Plus for making today possible. And thank you to all the reporters who are here today and participating. Uh, we miss you uh, and we wish you all a great rest of your day. Thank you, Becky, Trent, Dan, and Peter for being part of this today. Uh, audiences around the world can see Once Upon a Snowman on October 23rd exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Bye.